como hacer un reloj de novedades. Vámonos. I was looking for some suitable material to cut, maybe some acrylic sheet or something like that in, in, in black, obviously. And I was, I was struggling to, to find something that was uh, not overly expensive or, or too thick. And then, of course, the idea came to me. An old LP. It's vinyl. It should be relatively easy to cut. For added authenticity, it's a, a Spanish LP. Now, as mentioned, the thickness of LPs does vary somewhat, and we need to make sure that the depth of cut is going to cut through it cleanly without digging too far into our into our baseboard. So, with our digital caliper, just going to check what the thickness is, and we're seeing around about. 1.5 millimeters. So if we set the depth of cut in this instance to say 1.6 then we should be good to go. So let's get that done. Now I could change the cutting depth by going right back to the DXF to G-code program um, but it's just as easy to do here directly in uh, in the notepad plus plus. There are only a couple of places where the depth of cut is is set as we can see here in the g-code in the file at the moment it's set to minus 2.4 which is too far for our, our current LP so we want to change all instances of that to minus 1.6 and that's a simple matter in the uh, notepad plus plus if we go to the search and replace we're finding the minus 2.4 and we will replace that 1.6. So we do replace all, and there are only two occurrences that were replaced. Uh, if you recall, there are two shapes, the bullet itself and, um, how, how can we say, the other, other part. Um, so this is the shape number one. Once it's set the depth of cut, that's it until it encounters shape two. So now that we've got our, our code, let's just save that. And then we can go back and import it into our CNC program. And here in, in this window, we can see the changed value now representing minus 1.6. So the next thing to do is to get the LP stuck down onto the baseboard and set the X and Y zero points. So I've stuck the LP down. Uh, I'd like to use double-sided tape for that, um, similar to uh, double-sided tape that you'd use, like carpet tape, and just some pieces to stop it uh, moving around. As far as the cutter is concerned, or the uh, engraving bit, um, the machine came with these rather fearsome looking uh, pointed uh, blades or cutters and uh, they, they work okay but for this particular job I prefer to use some others that I've that I've purchased and as always there'll be links down in the description and I find this produces uh, for this particular application uh, a better cut as it's cutting on, on this on the straight edge there so that's the the bits that I'm using Setting the 0x and y for the cut is um, somewhat done by experimentation. By looking at the G code, I can tell that the first hoof um, is going to be on the on the on the surface here, some 50 millimeters from the zero point. So, if we say the first hoof is here, then um, that should be about right. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is a test run anyway, just to make sure that the G-code is not going to do anything strange when we're cutting, and obviously that the um, the tip of the horns and the tail, which are the, the furthest X and Y points, are within the uh, the volume of the, of the LP. So, as I said, in the G-code, the first point of, of cut is at 47.7, so I've set it to around 50. We're going to simulate the cut first, so I've made sure that the um, cutter is, is, is far enough above that it's not going to bump into the record because we're not going, to have the, not going to have the spindle motor running at this time. Before we start, we we'll have to make sure in the interface here that the X, Y and Z are all zeroed out to uh, set our zero point.
So having successfully completed the, uh, the test, um, we can now set the height of the cutter to zero and go for the cut. So to set the height of the, of the cutter to uh, zero, um, what I need to do is to, with the, with the toggle functions in the CNC interface, just move the cutter above the record surface. Now with that in position I can switch the stepper motors off and at this point it's obviously very important not to move the X or, or, or Y stepper motors and the, adjust the height and I like to use this old feeler gauge just to know that I'm just on the, on the surface there. So that's going to be our, our zero point. Now we can switch the machine back on and set it to zero and now we're ready to go for the actual cut not forgetting our safety glasses so that appears to be a, uh, a successful cut We'll get the, the bull taken out and move on to the next step. Pleased with the result of the, of the cutting. Uh, as you can hopefully see, the edges are quite, uh, quite crisp. And I've just cleaned up the edge here with, uh, with a file. And you can see the other pieces that we're going to need. Um, this is a pendulum clock movement, obviously, that's uh, widely available on eBay. And uh, there'll be links in the description to, to where I got this one. You may have to order hands separately, so just be aware of that. Uh, we have our, our pendulum bob. Sometimes you get a hanging device with the uh, pendulum movement itself. That simply clips on the back. But um, it's not going to work for us because it's going to the, the pendulum movement is in a very similar size to the, the actual bull, and that would stick out the top, so I'm not going to use that. What I've in fact done is to 3D print uh, a couple of hangers so that I can glue those to the to the back of, of the bull. Uh, so the first challenge will be to drill the hole for the pendulum movement itself. So if we assume that the, uh, the pendulum is going to be in this area here, and uh, this will be pretty much level with the, with the top. So that, let's get that marked out and, and drilled. Now clearly the center line has to be in this area here, so I've marked that and then just measured the height from the top of the pendulum uh, to the, the center of the hands. And with this stepped drill bit, um, we need to go to eight millimeters. So this starts at three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we can do this in, in one pass. I've attached the, the pendulum bob now and we've got all our screws. I've cut a little spacer from some uh, irrigation pipe and that's about seven millimeters just to space the pendulum mechanism from the back. So if we place that on there. Doesn't need to be too tight. I think that will give the uh, desired effect. And as we can see on the back, these 3D printed hangers, uh, one's just going to go there. So we can see there's enough, enough clearance for the pendulum to, uh, to clear the, the wall. Take care when fitting the hands that they, they, they're not bent and uh, will, will touch each other when, uh, when moving around. And also, on some of the hands, there's a very thin plastic sheet, which may not immediately be obvious. So just check for that and make sure that's removed. Um, the batteries recommended are uh, an alkaline cell and they will last an awful long time. So I'll just fit that. That's, that seems to be working a treat. I hope you found that interesting and amusing and will make one yourself.